known also by less formal names such as Comrade Omes, Hagelolo, Womhax and Ahaba, President Gengob has developed a cutting-edge image influenced by years of exposure in the public arena. Having served as the first Prime Minister of Independent Namibia, Gengob worked his charm in setting up the civil service, among other daunting tasks he was entrusted with as the key administrator. While not backing down in staying true to being from the land of the brave, when Namibia's voice ought to be heard beyond its borders, his message has remained consistent. We had a bitter war of liberation. There was apartheid in that country. There was hatred, hatred in races. And after independence, we adopted deliberately the policy of healing, the policy of national reconciliation. After having gained that independence, we realized that the second, first phase of the struggle was completed, but that the second and most difficult phase started. Gengob has since served in various political portfolios before ascending to the presidency. But it's his role as the Minister of Trade from 2008 to 2012 that saw Namibia's trade policies modernized to attract foreign direct investments based on the principles of equal trade. If we are talking about trade, fair trade, what are we trading on? If you don't have, if your raw materials go out, yes they are, resources go out, value added there and send back to you. I'm just having a relationship of a slave and a master. So we think we have to industrialize. No country in the world develop a part in that civilization. But away from the public life, he is a man that many, including those from across the political and social spectrum, describe as calm. Former chief of the Namibian Defense Force, Lieutenant General Martin Shali is one man who shares unique memories of Gengob both before and after independence. I, first things first, I would like first of all to join my fellow countrymen and women, friends, colleagues and comrades in wishing uh, His Excellency President Hage Kenekop a very happy birthday and many, many more happy returns. Yes, um, it's very interesting that so many people probably have made a lot of comments about uh, Comrade Hage, the way we all know him, both in public and private life. I uh, was one of those, I'm still one of those people who have had the opportunity to work with him before independence when uh, he was appointed director of elections in 1989 and led us to victory same year and final independence in 1990. So, um, when I got married the same year, he was one of those people who attended my wedding as prime minister and there many other colleagues. The judge president, Peter Damaseb, was my my best man, and so Commander Bomba also attended, but I'm talking about Commander Hagi now. So, yes, um, during those difficult times of mobilizing our people to vote for SWAPO under very difficult conditions, Hage showed leadership. Gengob typically also ticks all the boxes on fashion list too, as he is known to have a particular taste for fine cuts of fabric and accessories. Along with the late Hidibo Hamtenya and Theo Ben Gurirap, or the trio as they were known, he stood out as a finely dressed comrade even at the height of representing the country's case at World Bodies. 
one thing he doesn't like, he doesn't like sloppy people. Um, he, he want people to be to dress nicely. For example, he would tell, tell, tell me, no, he doesn't call me Jesus, I would say, he calls me by another name, which I'm not going to mention now, <laughs> but all the same. He says, hey, Martin, we are generals. You're not supposed not to dress like this. Then like, yeah, I'm in the genius, and I'll say, why are you interview being interviewed? The way you genius like that? And they said, okay, because of time and all that. Yes, it's true, but you've seen people of the 60s, how they dress all of them. Mm -hmm. Malcolm X and others, and Dean Patrick by table, those from Cape Town. You know, a hat, a tie, a white tie, a white shirt, a black tie, you know, all those things. They were gentlemen. The, their hairstyles, the Mandelas, and all the rest of it. I think it was just a fashion of the time. And don't forget, these three you mentioned, the same maybe uh, Komet Pohamba, they, they educated all of them in the United States. They went to university schools and universities there. So they were exposed quite early. That's why when we talk about people like uh, those you mentioned, including Komet Pohamba, because he's supposed to today, it's difficult to really to define him without actually talking a little bit about his personal history. Dr. Gaingob's uniqueness was once again demonstrated when he appointed an opposition leader as deputy minister. So, Mr. President, on this special day, may you continue to inspire us with your vision, your leadership, your dedication, and above all, your conviction of inclusivity and today mr president do not count the candles just enjoy your day one good memory that i had with the president that i will never forget it was on the 22nd of march 2020 that was on a sunday when i received a call that I should come to the state house. And I was like, me going to the state house, what did I do? Did I say something that embarrassed the president or the country? Nevertheless, I went. And that was the, the memory that I will never forget. When I sat there with the president himself and the vice president, and he said, I had a lot of discussions with your late president, Dr. Koimari Ruako, and I want to make it his dream come true. And therefore, I want to appoint you as Deputy Minister of Health and Social Services. That's one thing that I will never forget about the president. As the old saying goes, growing old is a privilege denied to many. And when one lives with satisfaction and happiness, there need be no regret. And this is what the birthday boy has embraced throughout the decades of his life.